Hey, Mike here. Uh, surprised by how many people saw my video last week uh, demonstrating the connect with home automation. A lot of people were asking similar questions, so I'm going to do a little few um, demonstrations here today to answer some of those questions so that I don't have to keep responding to comments individually. Okay, first of all, a lot of people were asking how it handles multiple people. Uh, the Connect depth sensor itself um, can handle multiple people just fine as you've seen if you've played any video games with it. The software that runs the image processing can also handle multiple people. The catch is in the rules that decide what to do with the automation system. And for my initial demonstration, the rules were set up just for one person. It doesn't uh, completely freak out when there are multiple people in the room, but it occasionally does something unexpected. That's just a matter of defining rules for multiple people instead of just one person. Pretty easy thing to do. Another question that was asked a lot is why not just use an occupancy sensor or what advantage does this provide over having a 10 to $30 occupancy sensor? Uh, first of all, as a convenience advantage, you can control this from, if you've connected this to a modern home automation system, you can control it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. You can customize its behavior and most importantly, using a single sensor with a single vantage point, you can control multiple zones and track the actual locations of multiple people in the room. Unlike an occupancy or emotion sensor, this detects the presence of an object or person, not the motion of an object or person. The benefit of that is, as I said, in having multiple people, multiple areas within the room. The camera knows how far away you are from the camera. Um, and that way you can control multiple zones of lights within a single room using a single Kinect sensor. This means that the Kinect knows the position of an object within 3D space within the room, while an occupancy sensor only knows that something might have moved within the room somewhere within the last 5 to 30 minutes. Another question people asked, why not pause the movie when you get up? Uh, this is just a matter of adding the command to the home automation system. My kitchen, which is where I keep my snacks, is right next to my living room, which is where I watch my movies. And so since I can see the screen from the kitchen, um, living in a loft style place, I wanted the movie to keep playing while I was up getting food. Okay, so today I'm going to explain how the Kinect actually works. The Kinect sensor projects infrared light into the room and uses this light to determine how far things are from the camera. You can see the array of dots in this software that was developed by the Lib Freenect people where my friend Preston and I are illuminated. On the right side you see the dots that are projected by the camera in infrared. On the left side you see the distance from the camera to objects in the room as a color. Red is close, green is medium distance, blue is a long distance. Some parts of the room don't reflect infrared very well or are in shadow from something else and these areas show up black. To understand how the automation software sees the room, take a look at this perspective uh, showing a radar-like view of an overhead and side view of the room generated from the Kinect camera. You can see that as Preston and I walk around the room, the software is able to resolve us independently. The final question I'll address today is power consumption. The entire system uses very little power. It doesn't use the Xbox 360. It doesn't use the PC. The Kinect camera is connected to an embedded controller running my custom software. The controller itself uses roughly 15 watts or less of electricity when it's running the Kinect and automation software. The Kinect also uses very little power. The lights go from roughly 600 watts to closer to 300 watts, saving about 50% of my lighting costs during work hours. So as you can see, if you're like me and you forget to turn the lights off, or you have a lot of lights in a room but you're only using part of the room at a time, you can save electricity using this system. So I hope this video has been informative for you. If you have any questions, you can still contact me through my blog, nitrogen.posterous.com. Thanks for watching.